to another weekly YouTube video. I'm really excited about this week's vlog. Before I dove into the video, I wanted to quickly thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Ritual. You guys have probably heard me talk about this supplement on all of my socials at this point. This is the product that I actually take every single morning. I am on like my sixth bottle now of this stuff. So this product is called the Symbiotic Plus. It's a prebiotic, probiotic, and a postbiotic. I feel like over the past year, my gut health and health in general has changed a lot. I never honestly consistently took a probiotic or a prebiotic or a postbiotic every single day. This is a product that's really easy to commit to because one, you'll actually see a difference in your gut health and how you feel, especially after you eat. And also they're pretty easy to swallow. They have like a minty smell to them, which is really nice. I've never had a supplement that has that. They're these small, smooth, capsule very easy to swallow really nice packaging so remember to use my code it's the same as last time page l30 to get 30 percent off your first month i know that you guys will love this product i've actually heard from some of my followers that have already tried it and loved it so i hope you guys enjoy this week's vlog and thank you to ritual for sponsoring this video i am currently still in florida it feels like i've been here for so long when i really haven't i've just like really settled in the house definitely is starting to feel like home which is really nice if you guys watched my last vlog I just had a little weekend we spent a lot of time in Miami kind of out and about and it was really fun it was a really good fun weekend sometimes after social events I leave the weekends not always anxious maybe sometimes anxious but just like my social battery is really drained and all I want to do is spend time alone but honestly I don't really feel like that at all I felt like it was a really really good fun Again, I feel like so many people struggle with social anxiety and I actually didn't realize what it was I actually never struggled with it until this year I always thought social anxiety was where you were out in public and you're at an event and you just like don't feel good And you feel anxious and that's obviously a part of social anxiety But for me how I struggle with social anxiety is like an hour before we're going out whether it's like to dinner or whether it's to a club or a party, I have a pit in my stomach and feel like kind of nauseous and sick and anxious and it's for no reason. And I was sitting there with my friends and I was like, I feel so bad right now and I don't really have a reason to feel bad. Like I wasn't worried about anyone. I wasn't worried about seeing anyone. I wasn't worried about anything. I didn't have a bad day. Um, you know, I didn't have a reason to feel so like sick to my stomach um and so that's the sort of social anxiety that i deal with and i think also maybe it was more delayed for me in my life i think a lot of people probably struggle with that um i haven't personally talked to anyone who like struggles with that specifically i don't know if it has to do with my job or things that have happened in the past i don't really know i don't really know what it's about but I was struggling with that a little bit this weekend, but then once I was out and obviously like once you have a drink that like kind of goes away, which isn't necessarily always a good thing, like, you know? But other than that, it was a great weekend. But anyways, today I have a meeting at three. It's a pretty important meeting. And then Tommy and I wanted to go surfing. I know he wants to go fishing. I'm gonna make Tommy lunch right now. I have two ads to film. I did want to go to the Restoration Hardware Outlet and get some shelves because my office is like filling up. This is the room I've spent the most time in. So it's just kind of crazy and like with camera equipment, um, gifting products. We also get a lot of these, which are um, fabric swatches and samples of dyes that I like or I don't like or fabric quality that I like or I don't like. I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but we are switching the fabric in all of our garments we're building on a core collection for dairy boy a core collection that will hopefully always be on the site um, with just a really high quality perfect material and it has taken years literally to find the perfect fabric that doesn't shrink all of that um so we're working really hard on this project um camo and then our core collection so you guys will hopefully see that soon. And then our next product we're launching is our PJs. But anyways, I definitely need some office organization. So, um, but I'm going to... I don't want to steal you away from... I'm going to go make Tommy lunch. I need lunch. Can you start the bacon? Um, it's out. It's ready to go. 
You can't even make it. I don't trust me. myself. <laughs> Tommy and I dinner. This is just a really easy meatball recipe. I was going to just do like a music voiceover for this, but I thought I would just like talk you guys through it a little bit because it's just so easy. Just organized the office. We got a new um, shelf from Restoration Hardware. So we're just gonna probably make dinner and watch a movie and go to bed, but I'm really excited about these meatballs. I'm gonna do like big meatballs and I'm gonna do some angel hair pasta. Okay, I just pulled my eggs and my meat out of the fridge. So I'm just gonna take a big bowl and I eyeball all of this, which is not super helpful, I know, but I feel like you guys can eyeball it too. Even if you're not the best cook, I think this is a recipe that you can eyeball. I can like guess for you guys what I think each thing is measurement wise, but I don't know. Okay, for the meat, this is ground beef. I'm going to use half, a little more than half of the ground beef. And I'll save this to make like hamburgers this week or something. And then I'm gonna add half of ground pork. Not everyone makes their meatballs with ground pork, but I think it makes it taste more like a restaurant meatball because oftentimes restaurants are using multiple different meats in it, whether that's veal, pork, ground beef. So I'm just gonna start mixing this together with my hands, which some people might find gross. I don't really mind raw meat that much. This is the only part I'm gonna mix with my hands until I make the meatball. So I'm gonna wash my hands and then add the other stuff. You do this all day long. One, My pants are gonna fall two, down. Three, go. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay, sometimes I put an onion in the meatballs, but I'm actually not going to put the onion in tonight. The only thing that I have about onions being in meatballs is I'm not gonna let them sit for long enough tonight that the onion on the inside would really cook. Like it would still be like a little crunchy. But if you cook meatballs for like hours or the whole day and it's like a whole, traditional Italian meatball situation. I would think onions would be good. Um, and the same reason why I'm gonna use garlic powder, a ton of garlic powder. Very important. And then I'm gonna do fresh herbs and dry herbs. I feel like they serve kind of different purposes. 
a ton of Italian seasoning, which is just like a blend of a bunch of different herbs. I'm going to throw, I'm gonna put like a half a cup of cheese in the mixture. Then I'm gonna do two eggs. I feel like my head is always cut off in my cooking videos. Two eggs. And then I would say a little less than half a cup of breadcrumbs. I like doing plain breadcrumbs. That's like, I sometimes do seasoned if I have them, but I kind of like to season it on its own. Like I add the seasonings, um, so I do plain for this because I season the meatballs like pretty heavily on my own. So it's like half a cup of um, plain breadcrumbs. I'll add more if I feel like I need it. Some salt and pepper, obviously. And then I'm gonna do a splash of milk. And then I'm gonna put just like two large things of basil. I'm gonna put basil in the sauce. So for the fresh herbs, it's going to be majority parsley, just a little bit of basil. And you wanna chop this up really finely because you don't want like huge things of fresh herbs in your meatballs, at least I don't want those. I've been craving meatballs. I used to eat meatballs so much in New York. Um, the Soho House, if you're ever at the Soho House, they have really good meatballs. And I feel like I was always ordering meatballs when I was out in New York. Okay, that's pretty good on the fresh herbs. I will show you guys what this bowl looks like. All right, here's the mixture. I'm going to mix it up and then I'll show you guys the next step. You don't want to over stir. Obviously you wanna mix everything up, but you want the meatballs to be kinda of like airy still. So make sure you're not over stirring the mixture. Next I'm just gonna put some olive oil into my pan and I'm going to cook the meatballs on all the sides, allow them to cook and then add the sauce for them to cook even further. I'm going to do it two at a time because they're pretty big and I want them to have space and room to cook. I'm actually going to do three but I will have one more that I'm cooking and I'm just going to move them around as they cook. Sushi butt. No, we know Sushi it. butt. Sushi butt. No. Say it. Sushi butt. Sushi butt. Okay, what is sushi butt? And he was like, oh, like the, the dad of the girl was like, oh, where are you taking her to dinner? And he was like, Matsu in LA. And the guy's like, what is that? Is it sushi? Yeah, yeah, it's a really good sushi spot. And he's like, oh, gotta watch out. You don't want to get the sushi butt. He's like, Sushi butt. Like, what is what? sushi butt? <laughs> what in the world? Sushi butt? So now like we always just sushi butt. But Any what sushi. is it? No, it's not a real thing. I think it's like he's he was trying to make a joke about like how some foods make your butt explode, but sushi's just not one of those foods. I know, all, that's what so I'm thinking. That's why it's funny. Sushi butt. Tommy and I are going to watch what's it called? 1923. I say a different date every night. I'm like 1942. Is that a show? No, I'm pretty sure that's a tequila. 1942. <laughs> <laughs> I've been spending too much time in Miami. 1942. I also said 1978. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. So we're gonna watch 1923. What do you think of the show so far? I think it's good, but I don't think it's better than Yellowstone. Yeah, you gotta watch the first one. First one's really good too. What's the first one, 19? I think it's 1880, no, 1883, yeah. I think that's it. It's like how the Duttons got 
the land. The, the land. It's it's really cool. Well, it's actually the journey of how they got there. Really cool. We're in bed pretty early, which is nice. Mm. Is it? It's like nine. Ice cream. You want ice cream? You want ice cream? You scream. For ice cream? Mm-hmm. Do you want ice cream? Mm, not really. Boo. I'll, I'll get you some ice cream though. Yay! You give me the coffee. The coffee? Yeah, I know you're gonna eat some. Mm-mm. Just wait. Tommy brought me my coffee. The best coffee ice cream in the world, the best ice cream brand in the whole world. There's strawberry, there's vanilla bean, you know the drill. He goes, Tommy goes, I don't want ice cream. You got my mango sorbet. It's not ice cream. But now I want the mango sorbet. Give me the mango sorbet. What mango sorbet? Exactly. You're gonna crack it. I already cracked it, I think. Woo! <laughs> The best sorbet brand, Talenti. I think everyone knows that though, like the mango Talenti. Sorry, I feel like. Tommy was like, I'm not eating ice cream. And then he I'm not eating sorbet. ice cream. Eating sorbet. I think people think sorbet is healthier. Ole. That is divine. Mm, Ooh. Give it to me. This shit is slapping. <laughs> yeah, let's watch the show. By the way, we still have no bedroom furniture. What do you mean? We got the bed. <laughs> but we're working on it. We need a dresser. I would still be sleeping on the floor if it weren't for pain. That's true.
gonna be rainy here all week. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I went to the beach this morning. You did? Yeah. How was that? Mm. Oh, for the fish. Really gnarly. We are going to go to the mall and get a few things from Crate and Barrel that we just don't have at the house and I need to run to Sephora. I don't have a car right now in Florida. I rented a car for a week and then I returned it because I think that we're getting a new one maybe tomorrow. Um, but so Tommy's car pulling me around and then Tommy has he had training this morning and then he's going back to work out one more time. And I'm just going to work and hang out. picked off my nails last night and they really hurt. They were kind of falling off, so once one goes, they're all going. But I have some like glue-ons that I've been wanting to try that aren't the Gel X. So I'm gonna give those a try. So I just went to Sephora and I got so much stuff. I've actually never gotten a bag this big. Like this is when you know you have a problem. Also, the woman at the checkout was like, ah, holiday shopping? And I was like, no, just for me. Anyways, I thought it would be really fun to do a haul for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna start with skincare. So quick skincare update. I feel like I never talk about skincare on my YouTube. I am using right now like pretty much only Bare Face. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of it before. This is not an ad. Um, I really really love their products. I feel like it's been keeping me very hydrated I want to do a full skincare video But before I put on makeup especially while I'm in Florida and I'm pretty tan I really love the Tata Harper dewy skin cream before I put on tinted moisturizers I feel like it just makes me like glow a lot. I do not use this as a moisturizer before bed or even in the morning I literally just use this under makeup and then I got some of these vitamin E face masks. I love these face masks and they're not too expensive. Um, yeah, I just really love these. I always get them when I'm there. And then I got the Tata Harper um, rice wash. I really like this stuff. Some of you guys might know this about me, but I wash my face with a Dove bar of soap. Although I'm on spiral actane for my acne, like for my hormonal acne, I don't get zits. Um, and I felt like when I was using too many products, and I was using too many face washes and too many facial scrubs and like an insane amount of products. That's when I was breaking out a lot. I literally keep it so simple with my skincare routine. I literally use a Dove bar soap and my bare faced moisturizer, sometimes a serum, and that's literally it. Um, sometimes I'll do a face mask before I do makeup, but I have a really basic skincare routine. But since being in Florida, I feel like my skin has been more dry. And every other climate, for the most part, like the Beauty Bar by Dove works really well for me. But I've been feeling a little more dry. So I'm still going to use the Dove Bar and like in the shower. Just like it makes me feel so clean. But I am going to start using this for removing my makeup um, in hopes that my skin is feeling a little less dry. Next, I got two perfumes. I... I'm a funny one when it comes to perfume. I get asked a lot about what perfume I wear and I never really talk about perfumes I wear. I feel like I did a favorites video like years ago where I talked about perfumes that I wear. So I like a really clean 
honestly not super feminine not super sweet smell besides rose and peony and it's really hard to find a good rose i actually really love the rose by lalabo i think it's like rose 31 i'm probably fucking that up but i really like that one love that one it's kind of like a masculine rose but i bought it for my ex-boyfriend and that just fucking ruined it for me so that's a wrap with that one. I'm like a big smell person. Like smells will li quite literally transport me back in time. And we're not trying to do that. So unfortunately, RIP to the Lalabo rose scent. Then the Diptyque rose scent is really nice, but it's not really for me, but it is really nice. Like I love it when I smell it on other people. So it's really hard for me to find perfumes that I actually really like. And I was in the checkout line and I saw this Joe Malone Peony Blush Suede Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And I was like, I'm just going to smell it. And guys, I love the smell of peonies. There was this one old peony perfume that my grandmother used to wear and I, and I don't think they make it anymore. And it was just like floral but not too girly. This smells very mature. I tend to like like more mature smells like one that you might smell on like a grandmother i know that like doesn't sound appealing but like to me that does like a very like a mature more musky smell and this peony blush sage by joe malone is just so good and i'm so glad that i smelled this i also love getting testers before i buy a whole bottle this is just like perfect and I'm so excited about it. I think it's like mature and it's pretty. It's like a little bit feminine and florally, but it's not too sweet. I'm really bad at describing scents. I really want to make a scent for Dairy Boys. And then this wood sage and sea salt is like really, really good. I think this would be better for a man, but mixing these two would be really nice. And I'm really glad it came in a set. I'm only probably gonna end up getting a big bottle in both of these. And I've actually never bought a, um, perfume before from Joe Malone. Um, I know that they were doing like big, big campaigns with like Sophia Richie, I think. Um, but yeah. And then I got the Glossier U. I've been wearing this perfume for probably like five years. I really love how this perfume smells different on everyone. It's a really clean, amazing, amazing scent. There's literally like no scent like this. I highly recommend going to Sephora and smelling it. It's really good. It's reliable. It doesn't make me feel nauseous. A lot of perfumes make me feel like literally physically ill. And this does not make me feel physically ill. Okay, now moving into makeup. I bought a ton of stuff today from Hourglass. I love Hourglass's products. Something that I do that I've actually never talked about. Like I definitely need to make a makeup tutorial. But I will use two tinted moisturizer colors. And I will contour with tinted moisturizer. So this is my skin shade. This is a 9 in Hourglass. And this is a 12. I'll use the 9 kind of all over my face. And then I will contour with tinted moisturizer like on the high points of my face to really make me look like dewy and sun-kissed. Because when I'm doing a natural look, I don't want to have to layer my makeup like crazy. I want to just like feel like I have a fresh face. So on those more natural days, like using no other products, no bronzers, no contour sticks, none of that. And just using like a darker product to like tan up your face is great. So I bought the Hourglass Veil Skin Tint. These are totally worth the hype. They're really amazing. They're really hydrating. They have good coverage. They don't feel sticky or tacky. And then I bought their concealer. I have their concealer already. It was a little bit too light. I got the shade Sepia in 5. And then I got their Mineral Primer. I'm not a big primer person in general. I don't really wear primers, but I did want to try this. Something that's really important is using products that work well together. Whether it's water-based, silicone-based, if you mix different things, it can really mess up the texture of your makeup. And my goal a lot of the week when I'm not doing full glam is for my makeup to like sit well all day and look natural. So using a good moisturizer primer, especially for the dewier makeup looks, I think is really important. So I wanted to give this a try. And then I bought the Hourglass foundation stick and chestnut for a contour i wanted to try this for contour i've seen people do that but i wanted to give it a try i've never tried their um foundation stick so i'm excited to try this next i got a few things from makeup forever so my friend was using this this weekend and i was like what is that you guys know i love my graftopian palette which is like a full makeup professional makeup artist kit that has all these different shades because i like mixing and matching shades depending on my tan depending on the look and Makeup Forever kind of did like their version of that. And I really love Makeup Forever in general. Here it is. 
really pretty. It's like a whole palette full of different colors for contouring and highlighting. I'm really excited to try this. And then I got the Patrick Ta eyebrow pencil. I love what Patrick Ta is doing. I feel like he's very passionate about what he does and hardworking. I love supporting brands like that. So I got a few Patrick Ta products. I got his eyebrow um, like spoolie thing that goes with it's like this soap brow vibe. Next I got Hot Gossip by Charlotte Tilbury. This is like a classic, I've had this before. And then I got Love Trap, which I've never gotten before, which is like a pinkier color. I wear a lot of pink lips. And then I got another Always Caffeine by Makeup Forever. Um, this is just like a really good staple. Then I got another one of these Patrick Top palettes. I actually have one in the bathroom right now, but I dropped it and then two of the pans broke. And I really use all of the colors, so I wanted to get another one. Then I got a new Kosas foundation so i wear the kosas foundation when i'm doing full glam looks so i got this shade and it's a little bit warmer i had the neutral olive shade and this is a medium warm so i'm excited about this one i'm curious if i'm gonna like the shade better they're like pretty similar shades this one's just like a little bit warmer and then i got this at the checkout like the little like checkout section i really wanted to try this because it's a pillow talk mini collagen like lip um lipstick thing like lip gloss and i really like pillow talk in general oh that's really nice and then the other thing that i got trapped into buying at the checkout was these mini kosas like their best seller lipsticks um they're just like a bunch of really pretty colored lipsticks and i like having mini lipsticks to keep in my car okay that is all for my sephora haul oh wait i got the dyson straightener I really wanted to try this straightener i've heard amazing amazing things about this straightener so i'll have to do like a whole review video for you guys on this apparently you can straighten your hair from wet to dry with this do you guys remember those wet to dry straighteners in high school that would like literally sear your hair off that's what i thought about when they said that it was a wet to dry but we'll see i'm really excited dyson is obviously known for a brand that is really science driven and prevents hair damage so i trust them so i'm really excited about this new dyson straightener let me know if you guys have tried it too okay i'm gonna put put all this makeup away and then i'm gonna make myself a late lunch and then i might bake something because it's raining and i don't have much more work to do today and i have a bunch of old bananas so i think i'm gonna bake banana muffins okay here's everything we got from crate and barrel we got these pasta dishes they're like basically like plates small plates with sides for pasta Got a few more of these bowls that we already had, and then some wine glasses. And then I just got this for coarse salt. I have so many of them because I've been making a lot of banana pudding, which I need to share with you guys. I haven't shared it at all on any of my social media. Basically what happened was is I made some banana pudding. Some of Tommy's friends came over, and then Riley, his friend, was like obsessed with it. So I made some for them when they came back over, and then they took it all. Anyways, I've been making like a ton of banana Pudding. So I got a ton of bananas and I didn't use all of them. So here we are. Really good. 